Here I got the Holy Trinity of Redstone. Got a button, pressure plate, and the lever. Uh... So for the pressure plate, just popping it off. You see there's two parts. There's the top and the base. And so if I pop the base, you can see I'm using foil tape as contacts. And looking closer, you can even see the little indentations. Now on the left, I'm using copper foil tape, and on the right, it's aluminum foil tape. And they both are able to carry the current. I used aluminum foil tape for the top since it didn't need any soldering, unlike the base. The base just pops in. The pins just pop into the top pins of the modular base. And now pressing down, we'll connect those leads across and allow current to flow through. Sometimes when using foil tape, it doesn't make a secure contact, and so sometimes it jitters a lot. In order to remove the jittering, you can pair it with the microcontroller. And so when the microcontroller reads the input of pressing down on this pressure plate, it can have a delay, whether it be a stone or a wooden pressure plate. So instead of having to press it down, you would be able to just press down once and have a specific on time. There are buttons thin enough that would fit within the printed body, but I use copper full tape just to make it simpler so you wouldn't have to solder leads onto the buttons themselves. These buttons here are specifically from an aux cord, so it has a mute mic and then volume up and volume down function. Another way to implement the pressure plate would be to use a strain gauge. The strain gauges will be useful for the gold pressure plate and also the iron pressure plate since you can measure the force. Depending on how much force is applied to the pressure plate will determine the output. When testing the strain gauges, I was able to get a readable output to the microcontroller. The problem was that I didn't have a good solder on the pads. Every time I would press down on it, it would disconnect from the pad, eventually just ripping off the pad entirely. I'll try again and hopefully I get a better outcome. Now for the inside of the block, one of the pins from the pressure plate is connected directly to the positive of the battery pack and the other side is connected to the data out of the new block design. On the bottom, the ground and the positive lead of the battery pack go out into the blocks. The wires run through this metal block and into this repeater in order to power the microcontroller. And the data out is able to go into this redstone block here. The initial voltage is dropped down a little bit and sent out to the right. And also the same for the left. The redstone dust using voltage drop just allows for multiple inputs. We can start the signal here, we can start the signal here, we can start the signal here in the middle and allow it to branch out while also dropping the brightness. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. And thank you for watching.